President Biden and Vice President Harris are set to make a rare joint appearance in Pennsylvania today for another set of campaign events. They will head to Girard College in Philadelphia, where they'll officially launch the Black Voters for Biden-Harris initiative. After that, Biden will deliver remarks at an event with the Black Chamber of Commerce at a local Black-owned small business. Let's bring in CBS News campaign reporter Shauna Mizell, who is in Philadelphia and joins us now. Uh, all right, Shauna, so tell us more about the campaign's current push to rally black voters. How are they doing with that key demographic? Good morning. This event here in Philadelphia, a key battleground state, is just going to be the latest in the Biden campaign efforts to connect and hopefully galvanize black voters to the polls this November. We recently saw the president speaking at Morehouse College in HBCU. And on the campaign trail, Biden and Kamala Harris have both touted the historic investments that their administration has put into historically black colleges and universities. But black voters are seemingly peer Peeling away from supporting Biden. Some in that demographic now say that they would support Donald Trump. And this is something that Trump underscored hosting a campaign rally in New York in the Bronx just last week. But we know black voters were key in not only propelling Biden to the White House, but also helping him clinch that Democratic nomination in that crowded field. So this is going to be a demographic that both presidential candidates may be working to see some inroads and gains in ahead of November. So the Democratic National Committee plans to vote virtually next Tuesday to nominate President Biden and Vice President Harris. Um, I guess seeing as it's a foregone conclusion, maybe virtually just saves a lot of money in travel. But what's behind this move? This move really is not about the budget. What we are seeing is that in the state of Ohio, there is a deadline of August 7th for election for parties to put their candidate up and declare that. They have to be officially nominated to appear on the ballot in November in the Democratic National Convention, which is scheduled to take place <laughs> later in August in Chicago, actually comes after that Ohio deadline. The governor in Ohio, Mike DeWine, called for a special se session, but we've seen legislators really fail to get any ground game going on this. And so now the DNC is stepping in and say they'll do this virtually to nominate Biden as the party's nominee. Uh, all right, let's turn now to the Trump campaign. Uh, as you know, the former president's criminal trial uh, will be concluding soon. Uh, what have you heard from your sources about how the campaign is preparing for whatever the outcome is, Shauna? The campaign is going to be watching closely, as we all are, having just been in New York yesterday. We know that the jury will hear charges today and then go into deliberation. And the campaign is going to have to react, depending on what that verdict is. If it is non-guilty, we could see Trump going on a vindication tour. But they will also have to grapple with voters who would say if they would not support a convicted felon, if we do see a guilty verdict come in. Um, so these days, what are, uh, oh, sorry, rather, I guess, where is the Trump campaign, I guess, winning with voters? And where are they looking to boost support? CBS News polls have showed that the Trump campaign is winning in key battleground states that are needed to win the presidency, like Arizona, like Nevada. And so those are going to be areas that we could expect to see Trump focusing. But as far as voters, we've talked a lot about Nikki Haley voters. We've continued to see voters go out and support Nikki Haley in primaries, despite her having dropped out of the race months ago. And so that's a voter block that we could see the Trump campaign going after. All right, Shauna, thank you very much.